Hey, welcome back to Score on Business. Our next guest is John Maddox, who's returning. Um, you've been been with us before. So John's John has is a serial entrepreneur. Um, is it a good thing or a bad thing? You're not sure yet. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. And and you have several things you're doing now, but the one we'll focus on for now is idea share. So John has founded multiple companies. One of his ventures is idea shares, part of a growing trend of companies that provide important services to start up for equity in the new venture. John, thanks for being here. Oh, thanks so much. I think we're almost uh, a year to the day yeah. since the last time I was on. <laughs> so tell, tell us a little bit about idea shares. Well, idea shares is a venture, uh, we call it a virtual idea incubator. Yeah. Um, so there's uh, you know, other guests you've had, you know, Robbie talking about the EC and different yeah. accelerators. And it's a, you know, it's a foundational premise. You know, a lot of entrepreneurs really need the help to really accelerate and incubate their, their idea. There's a lot of folks who just refuse to come out of the shadows. They don't yeah. have necessarily the time um, or they're not ready to go uh, go into one of those programs. Um, so with IdeaShares, we've built out a, a methodology for people to kind of come out of the shadows. There's no capital risk. They can go and test their ideas. Mm -hmm. And uh, my partners, uh, they've been heavily involved in the intellectual property world for uh, over a decade. They own a bunch of patents themselves. They've been investors in companies, mm -hmm. a lot of different things. And over the last decade, they had built out a a uh, very comprehensive test they would have entrepreneurs take before they would decide whether or not to invest in the company, help the company, do a variety of things uh, for that venture. Um, so last year we turned that into a um, into a digital platform. So on ideashares.com you can go, you can test your idea. It's mm -hmm. totally free. We do not charge you a dime. Um, mm -hmm. You can test the validity of your concept. We have all, uh, Idea Shares University where you can learn all sorts of educational components. Um, and then from there uh, you get a score and a SWOT analysis of your initial idea. Um, now, where the equity um, and the acceleration comes into play is if you score high enough, um, we'll be very interested in potentially taking an equity position in your company and really helping you accelerate taking that from paper napkin mm -hmm. to profit. Right. And and the I think you made a couple of points that are really good, like the the accelerators at the um, the incubators and accelerators at the Entrepreneur Center are. Phenomenal, yes. And they're 14 weeks where you have to be there every day. Yep. And so, what you're doing is for folks who are not prepared to do that. Well, not prepared, and also um, as a precursor to going to the accelerator. Right. Um, so we're actually partnering with, uh, uh, meeting up with the Entrepreneur Center over the next couple of weeks. Yeah. And we're developing out another test um, in the enterprise arena versus more of the product side. Okay. Um, we're also we're working on a uh, with a couple different accelerators, mm -hmm. we're working on building out. Uh, we're calling the Idea Shares Alpha Test, mm -hmm. which is specifically about the person and your right. personality types. You know, what are your strengths, weaknesses? What are the things you need to shift if you want to be a successful entrepreneur? And a lot of those are all kind of coming together of, hey, let's test the idea, let's test the person, let's provide the educational right. component, let's provide the resources yeah. to take those uh, from idea stage into a more comprehensive well, level and then be ready to go into yeah. a more comprehensive um, methodology. You know, testing the, per Robbie was just talking about at the Entrepreneur Center, what they found is the entrepreneur is who makes the difference. Yes. So testing them is, is good. And you, um, what types of companies need to worry about intellectual property? Well, I mean, that, that world, the world of intellectual property is getting pretty interesting uh, these yeah. days. Uh, recent legislation um, changed things from first to have the idea and be able to prove it to he who files first wins. Right. Um, so first to file world these days. And, you know, if you've got an idea, you should try or at least look into. Now, not every idea needs to be patented. Right. Um, you can go to trademarks, there's trade secrets, there's a variety of angles you can go down that road. But if you have a physical product, you better try and get that patented. Right. Um, digital is much more difficult, um, yeah. but there's actually some ways now that you can really dive into uh, that gives you the opportunity to potentially uh, patent technology. But even with that, um, on the software, um, software side of the, of the game, you can still look at um, protecting different components of it and not let people just copy it carte blanche. Well, it, one thing, I don't know that much about intellectual property. I remember one time reading about it and, and there were a lot of people who would just go and patent everything and then when somebody actually invented it. Trolls. Yeah. yeah. Talk, a, talk a moment about that. That's, a, that's happened quite a bit. Um, yeah. But a, a lot of that has to do with um, what's the level of 
back-end evidence that you have. So one of the things we always recommend people do is keep a uh, invention journal. Right. So that's conversations you had. Time stamp it. Yeah. You know, with digital technology these days, use Evernote. You yeah. can time stamp when you ha I had a meeting with you to discuss yeah. an idea. I talked with this vendor and yeah. <clears throat> what happened. So a lot of that stuff in conjunction with, you know, I'm actually having a physical patent in relation to have, also having um, uh, the journals and all the reports yeah. and all those different components of what came into that idea yeah. uh, can become very, very important if you get into the legal battle. And to be honest, very often it boils down to he who has the most money uh, for the lawyers wins. Yeah. And that's a very, and there's a lot of legislation that's being proposed and different regulations being put in place to try and mm -hmm. mitigate uh, the success of the patent trolls, but it's one of those uh, e evils, resident evils that you have to, right. um, to focus on. And that's why, uh, you know, one of the things we really look at is, um, you know, if you're especially in the physical product side, um, let's get it patented, and then let's go license that product to a Walmart. The yeah. patent trolls are a lot less likely to go up to uh, go up against Walmart, Target, okay. Home Depot, because they've got more they, they got more money for lawyers than yeah. the trolls do. Uh, right. Those those kind of things can be. Uh, there's different ways to balance it out, but okay, and that's part of the value you all bring is to help folks navigate that. A absolutely. So uh, if you go and go on our website, totally free, create an account, test your idea. Yeah. Um, after you get your score, we even help you file what's called the SB16, which mm -hmm. is the provisional patent form. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the first stamp okay. in uh, that process of um, protecting yeah. intellectual property. Um, we, we have relationships uh, beyond that. We have relationships with a variety of vendors that you know it's in our best interest. You know, we're taking a position in the company. Yeah. It's in our best interest if it's successful. Right. Um, so we've gone out and vetted and uh, developed relationships, uh, a lot of them over the last decade, yeah. um, with people who um, we know will do a good job, do what's right, and we've uh, worked out pricing structures with them. Okay. So part of the idea is of idea shares is let's mitigate the time and the capital requirement yeah. to take that idea from idea to ready to go to market. Right. Whether you're starting a business, whether you're licensing a product, there's a variety of different angles that can be taken, yeah. but let's mitigate the uh, the risk and the time required yeah. and get to market first and very often kind of make the the patent troll side well it's not worth their while if it's already grabbed market share and um, you know they might try to come after you but yeah that's a little bit bigger fish than I want to try and tackle right, right. now they might have some teeth that might be a piranha not yeah. a, uh, a tadpole you know yeah I like how you try to work on strategies to I like that so why do people need help incubating ideas. Well, it's, as other uh, guests you've had have, have talked about, you know, there's a lot of folks, it's kind of their first time down yeah. the down the business road. You've been a serial entrepreneur, I've been yeah. one too, and uh, there's plenty of things that I wish I could go back and have shifted, oh, I would have yeah. done differently, yeah. and it's not that I went into it being stupid, I just didn't know. And there's yeah. so many different variables in business we can never account right. for. Um, having the, I think Robbie uh, was talking a while back on uh, uh, the mentorship and just having those people have already mm -hmm. stepped in those potholes and right. be able to point it out to you and say, hey, I see this coming in your future, make this shift. Yeah, and so, uh, I'll tell you, things, there's just no way for one person to cover everything. And we, we all have our areas where we're strong and not as strong and the keys to get some folks to help in the areas we're we, not as strong. Well, you know, in, in today's world too, with the ability to outsource yeah. different components, you know, the kind of the old school model, of you know the startup was you have to have every single piece of your team you would need to, to start a business, yeah. but the cost for that can be astronomic. Right. And you know raising the capital is difficult. Yeah. You know it's 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 hard to to raise a lot of the money. There's so many people with ideas. It's supply and demand economics. Yeah. How much money is there? How many ideas? Yeah. And uh, if you're able to really lessen the amount of capital that's going to be required to start mm -hmm. your idea by outsourcing this component to an expert. In reality, very often you're getting more resources for mm -hmm. less money yeah. than you would if you hired an internal oh. resource. Oh, there's no doubt about that. I'm a huge fan of that. You can, if you if you outsource it, you most likely will be able to get somebody with far more expertise than you could afford as when you're a small company. Absolutely, and, and very often, I, I found this personally, um, you, know, you build those relationships with your, your vendor partners yeah. that you're outsourcing things to, um, you get to know each other very well, and yeah. then very often that can lead to business. Yeah. You know, they know somebody that needs what you do, and vice yeah. versa, and you can create and expand uh, your area of influence um, inside of a market, and right. they can help you avoid things. That's the area of expertise. Yeah. And yeah. uh, rather than being egotistical and thinking I'm the only one that can ever yeah. do anything, trust in others. You know, I'm the, I was talking on an earlier show about a new um, service that we're starting at my company, and we're doing one piece of it. 
And so there, there's two other companies involved in this, and we work well together. But, you know, I do well. What, what we do well, we do really well. And that's where we need to keep our focus. You know, a quick example of that with my uh, company I sold a couple of years ago was an interactive agency. Yeah. And when we first started that company, me and my partner, it was just he and I, and I went to all the big agencies yeah. and offered us that we would do all their web services for them. Right. And I got turned down left and right. Yeah. Um, of course, I was at the rise of the, you know, real rise of every business, every business needs a website and all those components. And uh, very long story short, you fast forward to the time they started calling me um, wanting resources. I had grown the company large enough that I was c competing directly with them. If mm -hmm. we would have started that outsource relationship, that's, this is our area of expertise, this is your area of expertise, yeah. uh, I never would have been a competitor. Right. But I actually ended up coming out ahead of the curve, yeah. even though I was mad at the time about being turned down, right. uh, it actually worked out better for me and not as good for them. That doesn't surprise me at all. Okay, well, we're, we're closing in on the, on the end here. Um, one thing, John, that's always impressed me about you is the way that you, you're able to think outside the box. Like, when you were on here a year ago, you had figured out a way to develop software that, that really took a lot of the pain out of it. And, and I just, um, I guess I was trying to think of a question to put in that or something, but talk just briefly about thinking outside the box. Hmm, that's an interesting question. The, uh, yeah. I'm glad you think that about me. Yeah. The, uh, thinking outside the box, you know, I think one of the biggest problems that most entrepreneurs have is they've been compartmentalized into <clears throat> the rules of mm -hmm. their company and the structure, which is very, okay. very important for so a company we're, structure. We're counting down, so, and that's another reason to have mentors is to get some yes. other feedback. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, and we'll be back next week. <laughs> Sorry.